Hello there folks, this quick video today is going to show up how to set up communications between a Red Lion HMI and some different Allen Bradley PLCs. We're going to talk to the uh, PLCs via three different methods. We're going to have the DF1 serial protocol, we'll do DH45 protocol, we'll also do the .L5K driver, and uh, I don't have it listed here, but we'll also have uh, the PCCP connection over Ethernet as well. So first of all, we're gonna I'm gonna show off a little bit of uh, Alan Bradley software here. I'm gonna use RS Logix 500 here, and in this case, if I do File New, and I'll show you what we're gonna use here for an example. Maybe in this first example, we'll pretend that we happen to have the Slick 505 model. I like this one because it has both a DF1 port and a DH45 port on it. So I'll click OK, choose that. The only thing you need to look at in here is under channel configuration let me do that again if you expand this tree or double click on channel configuration you're going to see that channel 1 is currently set up as a DH45 and channel 0 is set up as DF1 now it's always important to look at your settings so if you click on the channel 1 tab you'll see that it's talking 45 or DH45 here and the baud rate is 19200 and the slave address is node 1 if I go to channel 0 you'll see that we're doing 19200 here and source ID is 9 I don't think you actually have to have that here but uh, uh, we'll go ahead and you know what, let's change that to 1 just to be the safe side here whoops I hit enter and it took it so there you go double check here real quick yep there we go alright so over in the um, Red Lion Crimson 3 software what we're gonna go is we'll go to communications over here on the left hand side make this a little bigger so you guys can see this and if I click on for instance the RS-232 port and then over here where it says no driver selected I'll hit the pick button and again there's there's all kinds of drivers in here but we're gonna look at the Allen Bradley for the manufacturer here and we're gonna select the DF1 master as our particular driver we'll click OK and we want to make sure that all these settings in here match what we have there so we're going to change this to 19200. I believe that's what I had set there. Let me double check, team. I'll go back here to Rockwell. Channel 0, 19200. Source ID is 1, so I'll make sure that's the same here as well. Uh, yep, so this source address you're looking at here is going to be that of the HMI itself. But all these settings here match. Then I'll click here on the device right here. And notice here the drop number is 1, so that matches the software setting there. Uh, if you were using, for instance, a PLC5 or a Micrologix, you'd want to choose that appropriately here. But in this case, we're using a slick 503 model. So that'll take care of that. I always like to over here rename things. So I'm going to call this one DF1. Whoops, I hit the. Let me try it again here. I'll right click or do DF1 and enter. And remember, anytime you touch the keyboard, hit the enter key. So that'll take care of setting to this guy to talk over the DF1 protocol. Now, if I want to talk DH45, I'll just click on the RS45 port here. Hit the pick button here again. Once again, I'll select Allen Bradley. This time, I'm going to choose the driver DH45 master, and I'll click OK in the lower left-hand corner. You want to make sure, again, that all these settings here are the same. And once again, if I go over to RS Logix 500, double-click on channel configuration, look at channel 1. Yep, 19200 is perfectly OK. So I'll go back to Crimson. This all matches. And then if I click on the device here, again, I want to make sure that this device type matches what you're talking to and the drop number. And I'll change this one here to be DH485 here. There we go. That takes care of setting up those two. Now, if I also wanted to talk to this uh, Allen Bradley Slick, and maybe I'm using not a 503, but a 505, for instance. So if I hit the pole down here, I'll do New. And this time I'll choose a 505, which has an Ethernet port on it. I'll click that one. Just show it here. I'll pick this top one here. Click OK. Once again, I'll double click on channel configuration. You're going to see here, in this case, channel 1 is going to be set up over Ethernet. And channel 0 is still the DF1, which is your kind of your backdoor entrance here. But we're going to use the channel 1. So you're going to want to make sure the IP address here matches that of the device. So uh, I don't know if I can enter this here. Uh, you know what, hold on here. Do, 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 do. Hmm, I'm trying to change this. 
Well, I have to figure out where I can change the IP address. Uh, wait a minute. Right here. I have to uncheck the boot P. Sorry, team. I'm not a Rockwell expert here. But anyway, you'll put in the IP address here. Say, for instance, 192.168.1. And maybe I'll make this guy be .2, for instance. Oops. I hit enter again. Sorry. So we'll double check that. So it's dot two. You want to make sure the rest of this matches your system. But in this case, it's going to be dot two. So I'll click OK. I'll go over here to the Red Lion software, and we're going to talk to it over Ethernet. Then we would want to make sure we set up the Ethernet port on our HMI or whatever device we have from Red Lion. So click on the Network tab here. You've got two Ethernet ports. Let's just use the first one here. So we're going to make our HMI will be dot twenty on the same network, and then if I hit Protocol one here under that drop hit protocol one over here on the left hit the pick button right here once again I'm going to select Allen Bradley but this time the one I like to use or teach a lot about I like to use this driver here this DF1 master via PCC slash EIP here I'll click OK and then if I click right here on the device you'll see that I can choose PLC5 or slick I'm going to use that one and you want to make sure that this IP address here matches that of what you set up in the RS Logix 500. So that's correct there. And then I'll just change this. I'll change the name of this one, for instance, to SLC underscore 505. All right, that takes care of setting up those two methods here in this case. I will point out to you one thing. Let me make this bigger. When you're doing the 485 or 232, a lot of customers like to make their own cables, which is okay. But if you if you navigate to Redline's website, and you happen to go to their website, redline.net, hit the support pull down and go to documentation. And then in documentation here, if you click over here on the left under cables and drivers, click on that, and then it's going to bring you up an option here to pick what you're going to connect to. So down here, you select the manufacturer you're trying to connect to, choose Allen Bradley in this case, and then I'll hit the apply button. And it should bring up a listing of all the different cables we have available to talk to Alan Bradley. So in this case, uh, we're going to talk DF1 and DH45. So here we've got a particular driver right here. Uh, this one here is for the slick DF1 and DH45. Let me click on this guy right here. If you click on the link, it'll take you to the page for the cable. This is the cable you would need right here for DF1, CBL. AB001. Redline also gives you the pinouts here if you so desire to make your own cables. You certainly can. I highly recommend you purchase your first cable for testing and then if you want to make your cables after that, that's fine, but uh, they do have it available for, I don't know if they're 45, 40 bucks, whatever. They're less than a million dollars. Very affordable. So that would be the cable you use for DF1. Let me go back to that listing here. If I did DH45, yeah, they have a different cable for that one. Uh, this one right here for the slick. I'm going to choose this one right here. The reason I'm pulling up this one is because the 45 port on both the Redline product and the Allen Bradley product uses an RJ45 jack. The same type of port you would use for Ethernet connection, but totally different communications on them. So don't use just a standard Ethernet cable to do this. You'll have to make one. And so here's the wiring diagram for this one. There's a couple cables or a couple points that are kind of jumpered to each other and so forth, like right here, 3 and 8 are tied and 4 and 7. If you make this connection using a standard Ethernet cable, you will burn up your 485 port on the Red Lion product because Allen Bradley puts 5 volts on one of their pins for some odd reason on their RJ45 jack. So this is the cable you should use when doing DH45 comms from Red Lion to a Allen Bradley product. So keep that in mind. Again, it's on the website, and you can just look under cables and drivers, and it brings everything up. Now, as far as Ethernet goes, you just use a standard Ethernet cable to talk through it over this particular port here. The last part of this ex exercise is to show how would I talk to a control logic via uh, Redline software. So if I go, in that case, to RS Logix 5000, for instance, their other package for their tag-based programs, and let's say here, this is tag based. So if I put here, uh, I'll make a couple tags here. And I'll add another one here. Oops. So I've added a couple tags here. In RS Logix 5000, 
what you'll do is you'll hit the file pull down and you go save as and down here instead of saving it as what's called an ACD project file hit the pull down there and choose your RS Logics 5000 import export the .l5k pick on that and I'll just change this to uh, uh, we'll just call it today how's that July 2015 for instance that's what I'm making this video so I hit save saves it to my desktop is all I did now if I go back to the red line software crimson 3 <clears throat> hit protocol 2 here for instance hit the pick button here I'm gonna go choose Alan Bradley but this time I'm gonna select the native tag via the L5k enhanced driver this is the newest I'll select that one click OK then I'll click on the PLC over here maybe this one's a uh, control logic so I'll just rename this guy And of course you want to make sure the IP address matches but down here where it says tag selection hit the pull down there and then you're going to import your L5k file so I hit it here go find that L5k there it is right there hit open that's going to bring in the tags but you're not quite done here here this just brings up some of what you have in here if you actually want to look at them or use them in your program you need to double click on them or add them over here to uh, Usually just double click here. There we go. If you double click on them, you can add them over here to the list. How come I couldn't double click on Joe's? There we go. I'm not double clicking very well. Sorry, guys. Same goes for the other ones here. Uh, I'm not double clicking here correctly. Anyway, so that'll select them there. I'll hit the close button. That sets up that driver there to talk, you know, to talk to it. Now, to put those tags in your program or to actually interact with these things, you'll need to go to data tags on the left create a new tag here notice it's blue it's not map but over here where it says the word source hit the pull down and you'll see the listing of the different devices here so if I wanted to say get an N register an integer register from the uh, DF1 protocol I'll click here and I'll select for instance the N integer tags here and this is the default the N7 table colon 000, zero, zero click OK that takes care of mapping that one up to the DF1 N register so I might rename this one, for instance, DF1. Whoops, DF1 underscore N7, for instance. And then if I create another tag, boom, right there, hit the new button. Go over to the source. Say I'm going to do this one over DH45. I'll click here. Click on the same N integers. Click OK. And then I'll name this one, for instance, DH485 underscore N7. And if I want to create another one over that Ethernet connection, that PCC connection, once again at the pull down, I'll choose the Slick 505. And again, I still got the same listing here, N7. So this one here, we'll call this one, for instance, PCC underscore N7. And the last one would be the, the L5K Control Logics. I'll hit the new again here, hit the pull down, go select Control Logics. And I can pick any of these tags that was just setting up. So, for instance, Wazoo's tag here. I'll select it. And now this guy is mapped to that particular value or that tag inside the Control Logics PLC. So, that's how easy it is, team, to set up tags to talk to the different Allen Bradley PLCs. It's highly advisable that you purchase your first run of cables from uh, Redline. And then, after that, you want to make your own, you're off to the races. Uh, hopefully that uh, showed a quick demo. If you got any questions, please let us know. And thanks a lot for using Redline HMI products. We do appreciate your business. Thanks.